That's potassium hydroxide, guys, and so he's actually um, rinsing with the KOH. Yeah, and what this is going to do is it's going to get rid of any residual water that's in there and replace that with the stuff that we're going to be using to titrate. Because if you have water in there, that's going to affect the concentration of your potassium hydroxide, and it's going to introduce air into your experiment. So I've got a little bit left in there. I'm going to just do the little spinny thing again. This will get any drops that are on the inside of the burette rinsed out with water and replaced with sodium hydroxide. Okay. So now it's rinsed and ready to go. So it doesn't take too long to do that, but you need to do that every time you start a titration. All right, so we're just going to put this on here. I'm going to get my reaction container out of the way. And I'm just going to fill this up to the top. Now hopefully I closed the stopcock down at the bottom. I just realized I forgot to double check that. It is. Okay, good. Otherwise you're going to have stuff running all over the place and I'm a little bit short. Now, it's best to overfill just a tiny bit. And I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm above the zero, but I don't want to start above the zero. So what I'm going to do is just get a little beaker for waste. It's called the waste beaker. Yep, so just keep one around that you can <clears throat> excuse me, dispense waste into. And you're just going to get it right down on the zero to start. Bottom of the meniscus right on the zero. All right, so. Oh, did I get it? Pretty close? Okay. So now we're ready, to, we're ready to start. So we need to get our acid into our flask. So here's the acid that I want to titrate. I'm going to put 20 milliliters of the acid. Now remember, don't jam the, uh, the, the suction bulb down onto the pipette. Make it so you can easily pull it off. Okay. What I've been telling my students lately is when, they, when you pipette, just make the suction bulb kind of kiss the top. Don't jam it on there, just make it kiss the top a little bit. I can get it up right there. Come on, you can do it. So it takes a few times. This is, like I said, maybe not the most convenient way, but it's definitely the most accurate. Oh, and I missed my line again. Okay. So I'm going to get the meniscus right on my line. Perfect. And I'm just going to dispense this in here. Just letting it drain out. Now notice I'm not blowing on this. I'm not using the suction bulb to blow it out. When you use the volumetric pipette, you just let it drain out by itself. And when it gets all the way done, you simply touch the tip to the liquid in the bottom. There's going to be a little bit left in there, but that's okay. These have been calibrated for, to have that little bit left in there, because that little bit is the same every time. So just let it run out. Again, touch the tip to the liquid, and you're done. You've just dispensed exactly 20 milliliters. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. 20.0 milliliters of HCl of an unknown concentration. Okay, now we need to be able to determine when this titration is complete. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to add something called phenolphthalein. Okay, and you'll have little droppers of this lying around the classroom. And phenolphthalein is an acid-base indicator. Now, phenolphthalein, it, I'm going to put about, I don't know, two or three drops in there. And it's clear and colorless when it's in an acid. But it's pink when it's in a base. Okay, so I'm just going to swirl to dissolve that a little bit. I'm going to lower my burette so it's nice and ready to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to dispense some... Um, some of the base into the acid until it turns pink. Now, you don't want to overshoot this. You want it so it just, with one drop, it turns and stays pink. Now, there's a few ways we can do this. Now, you can just turn it on and let it run, but that's just a great way to overshoot because you, you don't really want to do that, okay? Now, a really good way to do this is you just kind of twist. And if you just twist, you'll dispense roughly half a milliliter per twist, and you're not going to overshoot, and it's good to swirl occasionally. And you're not going to introduce too much at a time. Because every time it goes by, it just lets a little bit through. All right, now this is going to take a little while. So we're going to pause, we're going to come back, and you'll see when, as I approach the end point. Okay, so right now I've just got a few drops dripping into the container. And you'll see that as they drip in, we've got a little pink spot on there. Uh, but when I swirl it, whoop, it goes away. Now we're getting close because the pink is starting to stay a little bit longer. So I add a few drops and it's pink. I swirl, it goes away. So the idea is that you want to add 
enough so that when you swirl, the pink stays for at least 30 seconds. And you really only want, it, want that to happen with the addition of one drop. All right, so I'm getting really close here. Just adding a drop or two at a time. So you guys, what you're looking for is it to just turn pink and stay pink with the addition of one drop. And the best way to get one drop is to do that quick little twist. Mr. Sands is pretty good, so he can he can uh, uh, adjust the stopcock. That's a valve. Um, yeah. Sands, I think you're there. I think you're right. Now I'm not sure the video is going to show this, guys, but um, it is it's, it has got a pink color tinge to it. There you go. There's just a very slightest pink to that. that That's means... the kind of pink you're looking for. You want the faintest pink you can actually get. Yeah. Okay. Now. I'm going to read my, my thing here. I have 38.5 milliliters that I added. 38.5 milliliters of KOH. And my KOH is 0 0.20 molar. Okay, so I know the concentration because it says so on the side of the container. Now, let me just overshoot this real quick. What you don't want is dark pink like that. Okay, if you get dark pink like that, you've added way too much, and you've overshot, and you're going to have to start over. You want the faintest pink you could possibly get. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these numbers now, we're going to do a little math, and we're going to calculate the concentration of the, of the acid that we didn't know the concentration of. Okay, um, now let's do the math. Um, so, it's all you've the math, isn't it? Hey, so, um, the chemicals that I mixed together, if you recall, here's the table here, I had HCl. And I reacted with KOH, and that's going to make water, HOH, plus um, KCl. That's the balance equation. It's a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratio. Now, if you recall, we had 38.5 milliliters of 0.2 molar um, potassium hydroxide. So we're going to use the equation MB equals moles, and my molarity was 0 0.20 molar. My volume was 0 0.0385 liters. Now, remember, this is milliliters. This is liters. So I'm going to get my calculator on here. So I'm going to take 0 0.2 times 0 0.0385, and I get 0 0.0077. So on the uh, table here, I'm going to say 0.00, 0 oh, no, it's KOH, 0 0.0077 moles of KOH. So I'm going to take that as a fraction over 1 and say KOH. I want to convert that to moles of HCl. So I'll say 1 mole of KOH is 1 mole of HCl. That's because the ratio here is 1 to 1. It turns out so you get the same number of moles of each, so that's 0 0.0077 moles of HCl. Well, moles, molarity is moles divided by liters, so that's my moles and divide by the liters. Now the liters, if you recall, was 20 milliliters of HCl. We use that with the pipette. All right, and so that'll be 0 0.0200 liters of HCl. So I simply divide these two. So I'll take this number that's already on the calculator, divided by 0 0.02, and I get 0.385. molar HCl. That's the answer. Okay. Okay. So hopefully now, folks, you have figured out how this all works, and uh, you're going to be doing this in class a lot. Yes. So you're going to become a many, pro. Many, many times. Okay. Now, this then leads into sort of the mathematics. Once right. you have uh, done the titration, what do you do with all these numbers? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we do. You typically, one thing you oftentimes will do is calculate the molarity. Mm -hmm. So here's a typical acid-base stoichiometry problem. This is very similar to what we did in Unit 9. It really is no different, yeah. except it's with acids and bases. Yeah. Uh, the key thing you want to understand, of course, is the master equation, mv equals moles. So if you can take the molarity times the volume, you can get the moles. So first of all, it is a stoichiometry problem. Yep, you got to have a balanced equation. So I'm missing HCl and NaOH. I'm going to write this out. You're um, going to be HCl very familiar with this yeah. equation. By the this, time we're done. this equation you're going to use a, a bunch, um, even in the lab, because it uses it for lots of things. All right, so what do I know? All right, I have 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl. So I'm going to write that down. 50 milliliters of 0 0.1 
0 molar HCl. I'm writing it under the HCl, and it takes 14.5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So if I do this, the thing I know the most about is mm -hmm. the hydrochloric I'll acid. I'll start with the thing you know most about. So I'm going to do that up here because I don't know, space, I think. So I'm going to say M times V equals moles. So my molarity is 0 0.10. My volume, I'm going to do this kind of quick in my head, guys, is 0 0.050 molar, or uh, uh, liters, pardon me. Liters. I divide by 1,000 to get to um, uh, liters. Remember, mm -hmm. the liters, or the volume here, has to be into moles. I don't really need a calculator for that one. That's going to be 0 0.0050 moles, because you multiply by 10 to move the decimal over mm -hmm. one place. So that's actually my starting amount for HCl. I'm trying to find the molarity of the NaOH. Yes. Now, the molarity.